In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friend, it is Wednesday. Thanking God for the gift of this Wednesday, the eighth day of November. Today we pray for hope. Heavenly Father, thank you for hope. Thank you for its light in the darkness. Thank you that no matter how dark the night you are with us. Our situations and circumstances may look dark, but we know you not only go before us, but you also walk with us. As we pray, please fill us with even more hope. We trust you, dear God, even in the midst of these seemingly hopeless seasons. We know our hope is in you and that the victory is already yours. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today it is Wednesday, uh, the, it is Wednesday the 8th, the 8th day of November. The 8th day of November, we go to paper 2, we are doing paper 2 chemistry, so again, I told you I'll be sharing with you every day's paper. So that we can do specific prayer for a certain paper. Okay. So in the morning we'll be doing chemistry. And in the afternoon we do composition. English composition. Creative composition and essays. Based on set texts. Based on set texts. So now you know. Mm -hmm. So Wednesday chemistry and English Creative composition and essays based on tech, uh, set texts. So that is what we are praying for today. So if your son or your daughter again has a chemistry problem, this is the day to pray specifically for that paper. If their writing skills is not quite okay in English, again, on the same. Thank you. <laughs> we have to pray for these children until the last day. In fact, the last day is the day we shall have the closure mass. And that will be on 24th, when all of you, when the last batch, will be going home. So, tutawasidikiza kweda nyubani na misa ya shukrani. I love this journey. Asante ni sana. Luke 14, verses 25 to 33, is where our gospel devotion is taken from today. Remember, we are on week 31 in ordinary time. Luke's gospel is noteworthy for its extremes. On the one hand, it shows the radical and compromising demands that Jesus makes on those who would be his followers and, at the same time, emphasizes, as one of the other Gospels do, the gentleness and compassion of Jesus for the sinful and the weak. Both pictures have always to be kept simultaneously in view and they are in no way contradictory. Today and tomorrow we will see both of these images of Jesus back to back. In today's passage, we see Jesus, as was often the case, surrounded by a huge crowd of people. They are full of enthusiasm and expectation, but Jesus very quickly pulls them up. Short and says, Whoever comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, and even life itself cannot be my disciple. This is a very shocking demand, especially 
for a society where people's whole lives were centered on their families. Luke is alone in asking that even the wife too be abandoned. But this is just an example of the totality of our commitment to following Jesus. However, we have to make two qualifications. First, the word hate is a semitic expression not to be taken literally. It could not be so taken as the whole of Jesus' teaching is based on love, not only of blood relatives, but of strangers and even enemies. It is rather a dramatic way of saying that anyone who puts any person, even those closest to him, before total commitment to Christ and his mission is not ready to be a disciple. There can be no compromise here. It is all or nothing. I love that part. It is all or nothing. Second, we also have to say that Jesus is not recommending a literal abandonment of one's family. That could be highly irresponsible and a violation of that commandment of universal love. But it is clear that for those who want to be part of Jesus' work, they have to give themselves completely and unconditionally. And where there is choice between the clear call of the gospel and personal attachments, they have to let go of the latter. It is important for the crowd to hear this. Following Christ is not just like football fans stalking their favorite player or groupies following a pop star from city to city. There is a price to be paid, and they need to know that there is one and what it is. That price is the cross, a level of sacrifice and suffering, perhaps even of one's life, that each one must be compared to undergo for the sake of the gospel and building of the kingdom. So to illustrate this, Jesus gives two examples. The first is of a man who had a plan to build a tower. Before he started, he made sure that he had all necessary resources. Otherwise, he might find that after laying the foundations, he could not finish the work and he would become the laughing stock of others. He began to build what he could not finish, they say. In the second example, Jesus speaks of a king with 10,000 soldiers who fights he is going to war with another king who has 20,000 soldiers. If he thinks there is no way he can win, he will send an emissary to negotiate the best peace terms he can get. Similarly, says Jesus, no one can be a disciple of his who is not ready to let go of everything he has. Following him has to be absolute and unconditional. The question is, how many of the crowd listening were ready for that? Not even that. Let's bring the question near home. How many of us 
today are ready for that. So ask yourself, am I ready? And what are the things I am doing, I mean, I mean, what are the things I am clinging to? What is it that you are so much clinging to? What are the things I cannot let go? And why is that? Why is that? To be a disciple of Jesus means being absolutely free. It reminds one of Francis of Assisi leaving his family and taking off all his rich and fancy clothes to replace them with a beggar's rags and being filled with a tremendous sense of joy and liberation. So, again, do I want to be a disciple of Jesus? Mm -hmm. To what extent? Am I ready to pay the price he asks? My dear friend, the paradox, of course, is that once I pay the price, I will get so much in return. Just, just ask St. Francis or St. Teresa of Calcutta about this. And you will get the answer that you will never forget. Thank you and God bless you.